Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 18. Thoughts? This episode is called The Singularity. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. So, let's dive right in. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure if it was the very first shot, but one of the very first shots in this episode, I think it might have been the first shot, is this nice long take where the camera follows Mac and we, you know, as damage is being assessed. Very nicely done. And, yeah, some, some great stuff between May and Mac. You know, and the thing, you know, he's like, how's Lincoln holding up? And she's like, nobody comes to me with, you know, about their feelings. And he's like, yeah, makes sense. And she just shoots him thunder eyes. Just, yeah, very, very fun. Let's see. And, and yeah, you know, the... the um, there's that thing about... Yeah, you know, he's like, we can't get the, how, how you know, you can't get the, get the Zephyr out of here. The door's only open halfway, you know, yeah. And, and she's like, there's one way, but it's irresponsible, you know, risky, dangerous. And then she smiles, and he's like, why the F are you smiling? And... Really love the scene where Daisy and Hive talk... Because it's the kind of thing, you know, it's a super interesting scene, and it's not really something that we've had before. Like, we've seen Hive talk to people he hasn't um, possessed. We've even seen him talk to Inhumans that he has possessed. But this is the first time where he's talking to an Inhuman that he's possessed, where his host body had an intimate relationship with the inhuman he's possessed so that's very compelling because in in some ways it feels somewhat like when hive was talking to gideon and he there's these implications you know i i absorbed nathaniel i i have his memories i know what you did to him you know and and here it's this it's a different there's tension but it's different i, I really love that and, you know, she straight up, she's like, well, why am I saying this to you? You know, she... And, and I also really appreciate this episode making clear, no, they, like... It's not like this kind of... Almost like robotic thing where just take over the brain and, and just giving orders. No, they know what they're saying. They know what they're doing. You know, it's more like an, an addiction and, you know, people protecting their dealer treating him like the center of the universe kind of thing which I also appreciate I think that's more interesting and you know by this point in the MCU we had already had like robots that just follow orders as as a major threat and yeah they talk about you know icers will not work on possessed in humans so yeah that's holy crap and they talk about transhumanism, which, despite the name, is not the movement to make sure that trans people are treated with humanity, which they should be. But it, it you know, it is a very cool concept. The and I'm really glad they're they're tackling it on the show. It would also it would feel very weird, like by 2016. Yeah, transhumanism was fairly. You know, I, I don't know if it was mainstream at the time, but it's, it was a con, you know, yeah, it was a concept. People in real life, like scientists, were actually trying to make these things happen. So, let's see, and I really, I there's a lot of great Fitzsimmons stuff in this episode. In general, I gotta say, now that they're together, it's it's actually even better. Like I'm. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of this thing, or will they, won't they, kind of thing, but, yeah, now that they're together, like, the thing, you know, they're, they're standing, because there's a bunch of people around, and they're trying to have a private conversation, so it's like, you know, Dr. Simmons, I would like to talk to you about our working 
relationship, you know, and the, the you know, I, I would very much like to keep, to, to protect our working relationship. Things might get complicated. And then she just says, you mean once we have sex? And, it's just, and, and I mean, I don't know if May heard and she's just like being, you know, trying to be, I feel like May would probably just let it go. Um, but yeah, that was that was funny. And I yeah, I like the detail that Daisy tells Hive that that's her name, not Sky. And you know, Hive at first is like, but Grant knew you as Sky. And once he once she explains it, he's not like well, I I was told to call you Sky, so I'm gonna keep. No, he actually kind of rolls with it, because like he does. Like there is very much this cult leader feeling to, like he's, yeah, um, you know where rather than like he doesn't feel like a, a dictator who just never. Ah, crap! How do I explain this? I'm not saying the cult leader cult leaders are terrible to be clear but yeah it does it's it's this it's the personal touch I guess is what I'm getting at you know it feels like I I don't know if he is like listening or respects her as an individual but he makes her feel that you know and let me have the Um, yeah, and they, yeah, they talk about that Alicia, it, you know, might be a target, and I really, really enjoyed Fitzsimmons just losing it at Mac over the lab coat remark, and at the end he's like, okay, fine, I will never mention you guys' lab coats again. Happy? You know, because it's just, yeah, that was that was very fun. And it's, you know, we've seen before that, I, th I forget, I think this might be the first time we see it with Simmons, but Fitz certainly not a big fan of, like, if someone who's known for being a physical threat, if they, like, imply that he isn't impressive physically. There was that episode... I guess season one, wow, feels like forever ago, where, you know, they go to the the training, the, the academy kind of thing, and, you know, the um, ward is, is like, looking around, and he's like, wow, everyone's so pasty, there's no muscle definition, and, and Fitz says, nobody with an IQ below 120 or so, something like that, you know. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, they talk about the murder vest, which I, d I do appreciate that he points out. No, I mean, it's it's technically worse. And, yeah, and they, you know, the, the place that Fitzsimmons are going into has a bunch of augmented people, which is very cool. It's It's kind of like if, you know... Yeah, a, a cyberpunk hub or something. And... Yeah, a good scene between May and Coulson. This thing of, you know... He's like, you... If you're asking me, you know, if, if I should... If you... If you should be, sh if you should shoot Daisy, then the answer is no. And you, and and she points out, you know, I'll do your dirty work for you, but don't you dare pretend your hands are clean. And yeah, so Lincoln approaches Alicia. I I really love that. At first, it does seem like it's very it's very tactical. You know, she pretends she has no idea what he's talking about. Great fight between Lincoln and Alicia and May and the other Alicia. Let's see. And the, the thing of, you know, they are, you know, humans are an inferior species. And, and May is like, uh, it's something like, you know, oh, yeah, hold on. Um, 
It's something like, yeah, some some kind of clever retort. I, I my memory is failing me. Um, yeah, and they they break a crystal in front of James, which yeah, that's that's a way to get answers out of him, to to hive him. And you know he immediately he's like oh yeah you know I I buried it which is also very clever that's a a good yeah let's see and yeah so they yeah they they get to it and Hive says it's the only thing that could destroy him so it's that kind of thing of you know I'm gonna keep it close to me you know, because that way no one can get to it, but I, I figure ultimately that will be how S.H.I.E.L.D. gets their hands on it, because he is the one, you know, because it is where. It either is where Hive is, or it's in a place that Hive controls, something like that. And, yeah, Lincoln, you know, tried to torture one of the Alicia clones and admits, you know, without Daisy, you know, he's kind of a mess. Which, yeah, there are a lot of people who feel like that, you know, and it is, we know that he used to be in, uh, I think they call it Al-Anon now, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, and yeah, he's he's really struggled, you know, and yeah, now he's met a, a woman that he really cares about, you know, he feels like with her he can control it, but without her, you know, and so Fitzsimmons pretend that the calms, the, the yeah, are, are, you know, yeah, having trouble and claim they need to reboot. That's very much them trying to avoid a yes, you are both on comms right now moment. So, yeah, I see someone else watched Alias. And <laughs> I like that. So, what you're saying is us having sex is like crossing the event horizon. Which, yeah, that's. That's legitimately funny. And let's see. Then we have the yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh Anon comes back and says, you know, okay, come come with me and you know and then she says, after you, and I think she says it twice. And both times we're wondering, is she getting them to go into someone? Because, like, if you're being shown around a place and someone says, after you, you know, normally it's like, yeah, sure, you know, it's it's polite or whatever. But, like, they're surrounded by these very, like, these people who don't really trust others. And she already, earlier, she tried to, you know, she said, I'll, if you give it to me, I'll take it to him. And they're like, no, 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 we want to see him in person. And she's like, I'll be right back. And then when she's back, she's like, you go first, you know. Just ignore, ignore the smell of burnt flesh. And then we have the, yeah. They're, they're asked to perform surgery. And, yeah, just some, some really great stuff. And it's, it's very clever because, like, it seems like, oh, Anon is going to take them to where Dr. Oh, hold on, I had it right a second ago. Where's his name? Dr. Radcliffe, where, you know, possibly related to the to the Harry Potter actor, but yeah. Um, you know, we're like, okay, she's going to take the Fitzsimmons to Dr. Radcliffe, so when yeah, you know, but then we get to a room and there's a guy mostly you know covered and you know prepared for surgery. 
sort of like, oh, I guess maybe she isn't, but it does turn out that that was Dr. Ratcliffe. So, it's a nice little subversion of expectation, du double subversion, I guess. Sub subversion. And yeah, I at first I thought, oh, well, they, I guess they are going to do this surgery, and you know, she gets the needle ready, and she, yeah, we think she's gonna like get it near one eye, and instead she just stabs the other eye and fits, and the audience are like, holy crap, what just happened? You know, what is that? And you know, he's like, well, at least you're not scared of being wrong, and you know pulls it out and his pull out game is not weak and yeah the the thing of you know she she looked at his eye and what was it a avian instead of mammary ma mammalian which yeah you know her being like by bi biological doctor she would know that fits is more like tech you know, hardware, so he wouldn't necessarily pick up on that. And, yeah, you know, the the test does make sense, you know, it's, it's one thing to just bring something that, you know, they can test and see works, yeah, and Anon, you know, gets reinforcements on her, you know, she's got the computer in her in her arm and yeah and we see that James can now blow we, you, yeah which raises the tension we see James can now blow up everything and it, at first is, is struggling to control it and oh wait yeah sorry that was early sorry this blow up was that the house was rigged to blow and yeah they they cover in the you know, yeah, and it's, um, what's the word? Um, yeah, yeah, um, Coulson uses a shield in the, the robot arm to, to protect them from the blast in a moment very clearly emulating Captain America 2 where Steve Rogers does the same after the the missile hits the the hidden base where Zola was and I like the, um, James trying to think of a good name for him for himself now that he has powers and yeah um, you know Daisy explains to Fitz and says, this is a warning, next time I snap your neck. So, yeah, really, really intense. I, yeah, this is, this is a very, very cool kind of, yeah. Yeah, technically this episode doesn't end on a, on a cliffhanger like the one before it did, but they are really, you know, yeah, they're very clearly headed for a uh, big season finale, so that's, yeah, very, very cool. And then we have, yes, so some IMDb trivia for this episode. Coulson's energy shield comes from the comics, used by Captain America when its metal shield was being repaired. Let's see. Ah, and when Coulson's overseeing Operation Decap, 37 minutes in, he's handling one of his vintage Captain America trading cards that Fury smeared with his blood in the first Avengers. Right, that was, yeah, very, very cool that all of Hydra's infrastructure was was taken out. Which, yeah, at, at this point, it is, it's Hive and his small group of Inhumans versus shield but that's also that's still a significant threat right and I, I like the the very ending where you know yeah James is still trying to think of, of a good name and Hive says he bought an entire town and they're going to recreate the Cree experiment which 
yeah, very, very cool. Really looking forward to seeing that. And let's see. Yeah, James states that he considered Firestarter as an alias, decided against it, felt a little 90s. Reference to the song Firestarter by The Prodigy. See, the first thing I was thinking was the movie, but that's that's 1984. Let's see, yeah. During Talbot's mission, one of the soldiers call signs is Red Six, not to the Red Six pilot. Call sign from A New Hope. Coincidentally, has its rights owned by Disney as well. I I thought. Yeah, I I agree. That's probably an intentional reference there. Let's see. And um. oh, right. The um. Um, yeah, Mac is in a bar, James is assigning his villain name, at one point he ponders the name Firestar, the name of Foreshadow, who in the comics served as an Avenger and a new warrior, and, let's see. yeah, I like <laughs> the thing of, you know, yeah. Let's see, the, the, um, yeah, after the, the bit with the energy shield, you know, yeah, Colson is trying to get up and says, okay, the leg hurts a little, and May says, maybe you should get a cybernetic one, and he's like, too soon. Let's see. And... Yeah, the, um, I kind of hope that an Australian got to actually either veto or accept, but it, it did make me laugh when, you know, yeah, Daisy asks James, are you drunk? And he responds, well, I'm Australian, so yes. And... Yeah, and I, I quite like, yes, yeah, so, yeah, in closing, I should be able to do an episode tomorrow, so look out for that. And in closing, I quite like when James asks, what are your muscles made of? And Mac shrugs and says, me.